Good morning, fish heads, or whatever time of day it is that you guys are going to see this. Jen Cravasi here at Jekyll Bates, and we're a day away from another weekend, folks. It's Thursday, May the 9th, 2019, and this is your workshop update. First of all, I have to apologize. I am so, so sorry. I'm usually really good about putting two, three, four, sometimes five videos up in a week. It has been an insane last couple of weeks, and this is my third take on this, so if I continue to sound like a zombie that has had no sleep and just ramble, y'all are just gonna have to deal with that. I'm, I'm just, I'm frazzled, I'm so, it's just been a long week. Um, not always work, work is a good thing, but it's just been a lot of different things. I've been commissioned to do a couple of big canvases for some customers, and I've had to kind of time manage when I don't normally have to, plus I have a lot of big orders. But let's get into what is at hand. Overwhelmingly on the community post that I did on the, on the YouTube channel last week, you guys really want to see a tips and tricks. And so that's what we're going to do on the next spray session. I'm probably going to add, if I don't sound too crazy, I'm going to add a little bit of that into some of the stuff, some of the pieces that I've done here um, that I'm getting ready to go out this morning. And uh, I've still got a bunch over on the clear coat rack that needs to come off of here. But this is what's come off so far this morning. Um, it's about 7.30 my time, which is central time in the United States of America. Um, I, whatever time it is for you, either good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you. Let's get started. First off, let's go into these four. We're going to do, and, and I've, it's not that I haven't had stuff that I've just been kind of getting out, but I want to when i do these workshop updates i want to try and make sure that you guys are seeing fresh content not just the same baits over and over and over because a lot of times certain times of the year people have a tendency to order the same things over and over again so that would just get really redundant and boring i think if i showed that to you so that's also part of like not i wanted to really give you guys some fresh content on these shop updates as well and yeah you've probably seen it if you're new to the channel there's stuff that you absolutely haven't seen and um, there's enough new stuff that none of you guys have seen on this that I felt that it was, uh, it was a qualifier for a good workshop update. So let's start with these little guys. Now these are wiggle warts. The blanks are from Predator Bass Baits. So well, actually, they're, he carries them. They're distributed at Predator Bass Baits here in the States. And there's a lot of different wiggle wart bodies that are going around now. Brian's got some really good pre-wrap molds um, molded. Bates over at Dinger. Um, Schultz is carrying a, a pre wrap similar style. This one in particular, I've got some old school, some OG hard stenciled baits from Jonas Summers over at Lower Color Studio and for wiggle warts. And these fit those. So on certain patterns, I really like to use these. They're good swimmers. Um, there, isn't, there isn't really a wiggle wart blank, whether it's real or a replica that swims poorly. Um, matter of fact, some of the blanks that are out there these days swim better than the original uh, Rapalas. But the thing about the old pre-wraps is um, the ones that you got that swam really well, swam extremely well. Um, it was hit or miss though. Some of them were just absolute dogs and some of them were just phenomenal. So on this particular one, now I am, I'm also going to have a disclaimer here. It's trash day in the hood, so you're going to hear my trash guy go by momentarily, and you might get a couple of dog barks along with that, so again, apologies. But this, um, my old cross stencil, this is that Bright's Landing, there's that squeal, there's the trash truck, the Bright's Landing crawl, you guys have seen this before, but the coolest part of this bait, and let me get a close in here, is the belly. On these cross segment segments, I'm using a completely different um, application on uh, some of the Artool stencils, the softer stencils. And uh, I, I just like the way that it's kind of come together on the belly there. So this is the blue fade into green and red, those iridescent red eyes, and then a little two-tone shift on the bill. I've got a couple of different, now it, you're looking at this like there's one that's a little bit different. Yeah, uh, my customer asked for some holographic foiled stuff and i didn't have any pre-foil predator used to carry a really cool um pre-foiled uh wiggle wart but i don't really like what's out there now it's an internal foiling and it doesn't really show up well against uh any paints so i don't normally get that but i did 
I'm not a foiler by nature, but I, I can, in a pinch, do foiling. And this is just basically foil that I have done myself on this. And you can, you can see it, actually you can see it a little bit better in this harvest crawl under on the underside here. You can really see that foil pop on that and it's throughout this bait. So this is that harvest crawl. And I even put a little bit of foiling up into the bill here just to give it a little extra flash. But this is a cool pattern. It's not a crawl that you normally see me do. I normally do the crawls where the outline uh, kind of gives it a three-dimensional value where it looks like you can kind of, if you peel that up, you can see the underlayers of those segments. But this is also a cool, and it's, again, I don't do it near enough. It's just a neat uh, variation on the pattern, but my harvest crawl has this particular pattern, so I use it. Um, but there is that. And it's just that red into a pineapple pearl. This is a very pearled foiled bait. And then a couple of little hand cut stencils on the, on the underside of the bill and the top to kind of give that cross or the crawl claw. These are the uh, perch. And this is, oh, you can see the foil pop a little bit right there. This is the foiled one. He asked for one foiled and one standard. Um, but I, on, on these particular, usually when the foiled baits are done, the colors have a tendency to really stand out a little bit more. And I do, I'm not sure why that is. Um, but it is that way, so it's a little bit more muted on this particular one, the transparent one that's not foiled, but um, this is really going to, I think both of them kind of contrast each other a little bit, but lots of fun doing these wiggle warts. I love doing them, and again, the Predator one is a really decent blank. Um, all of the ones, including uh, East and Over Shouts, have got pretty good molds right now, so pick one up. And they are they're they're good swimmers i like them a lot so we're going to go into the wake baits now this is that champagne ire you guys have seen that before i don't know why there's my focus i don't have an issue i always have issues with focus um, but this is a very transparent bait as well uh, just a little bit of blush pink raspberry in the face a little green trim some burnt orange just kind of modeled in and there you go. A little bit of orange on the throat. All pearl. A little pearl white. But this is mostly a transparent bait and it's meant to meant to be that way. The common ghillie. Next up. With those real eyes. I know I've been going on and on and on about those real eyes. You can get them right here at Lure Parts online. Um, these are really good because they come in absolute pairs. They've been made to pair, not just one eye that you have to flip around. So this is pretty simple bait to do. Um, this is a copper base. You start with white primer and then you do a, a, an entire spray of the copper. And then you put your little mesh on and add in that. This is a burnt orange fading into a burnt umber on those. I've only got three strips going down and it's very subdued that's on purpose and then a little maui blue and tangerine on the belly but very cool common gilly last but not least in the wake bait department the jekyll baits rat runner now this particular bait i've been doing for a couple of years i've got a video out on how I put the pattern together um, and how to use an artist's fan brush. And if you guys don't know what a fan brush is, I don't know if I have, yeah, I do. I've got one right here. This is an artist's fan brush. And basically these baits are put together by spraying your colors over top. And this is what gives you that hair pattern. So this is a quick tip and trick for you guys, but uh, a couple of years ago, I put out a, a pretty decent uh, two-part video on how to achieve that effect. Uh, the first part just basically deals with practicing on scrap paper with your fan brush and your airbrush. So we've blended a couple of colors together. I like doing a pink belly uh, only because it kind of gives a little bit more of a natural impression. And then I put some a little bit of red around the eyes and then put in, popped in that iridescent red 3D eye 
and that also came from Lure Parts Online. This is a circuit board lip, and on all of my wake baits, I always go ahead and clear coat the whole thing, the whole thing. Um, these have a tendency to crack and chip a little bit easier, even though this is a surface bait. Uh, so this just a little extra protection. The only thing that you have to make sure happens when you do that is that your clear coat doesn't load onto this, onto this surface. So I always kind of tilt it back with my drip wire and let that run off. And then if there's any excess while it's still really wet clear coat, I'll go ahead and pull that off with, with a little tail drip wire or whatever I have that'll pull that off while it's still wet. Um, you can see through here, this is a cream worm. It's the earthworm pattern. It's a six inch and I've, I've cut uh, an exact half inch off of the top of it because I really like for that to snug up to the, um, the split ring. You'll also notice a lot of, and a lot, I see a lot of people that do this, they try and texpose the worm into the tip of this hook as if they were using it uh, as a Texas rig. These things do not swim right if you do that. You have to leave this hook pretty much the way it is. Now, you also have to put them, if you're doing them yourself, you have to put them on to where the ho hook point is up, not down, or else you could get caught on, if you're going through grass and stuff, it'll drag on you, or if there's any brush on the water, but um, as long as it's hook point up and you've got it like this, this thing is gonna swim phenomenal. Uh, you can get, you pick up these cream earthworm patterns pretty much anywhere, Walmart has them, Tackle Warehouse has them. I also like to use different ones. I like to kind of scour, but the trick here is it's gotta be a floating worm. If you have a very heavy salt loaded worm like a, like a Yamamoto Senko, it's not gonna work the same. It'll drag this hook down and it's not gonna swim right. So it's gotta be a floating worm. That's the big thing there. Um, and then just made to mimic that, that fur. And I usually add about three or four colors blend in as I'm brushing. And that's it. You gotta use that fan brush. Uh, but go check out the video. I'll link it in the description below if you guys wanna check that out. I see a lot of people doing them now. Um, and that's that's kind of neat. I like to see everybody's impression on how they do them. Some of them are some of these guys are, are doing a pretty good job, but it still is not gonna even mine pales in comparison to guys like Gerald Novick and Pete Carter who have ju they're just beasts at the at the rat game and uh, I certainly don't want to copy them. I like to do my own thing, but you guys if you guys are into the rat game and the top water and subsurface baits go check out Reckless Rodents and go check out Gerald Novick's page on Facebook just fantastic guys we have gone through the wakes we've gone through the wiggle warts we are now into the 62 5 a's this is a cedar run this is that rotten strawberry i haven't done one of these in a while if you're new to the channel you may not have seen it at all and i've got some cells popping through here and what do i mean when i say that when I do the acid wash effect, a lot of people are like, oh, are you, are you dropping silicone like you do on your canvas stuff? No, I don't. But sometimes when the temperature is perfect and the humidity and the stars are lining up, <laughs> you can get that, uh, you can actually get cells in here. And I think what's going on there is a reaction between a couple of different kinds of paint. So if I, if I create a base opaque white and then lay a pearl white and a couple other things, and then I take my basic transparent colors and then put a wicked detail on the top. And I know that sounds like a crazy person talking, but it's, it's a combination of paints that react off of one another that causes that acid effect or that kind of cells popping up. This is not splattered with yellow. It is splattered with white, but not yellow. The yellow was my layer, my base layer on this particular type of, uh, of a bait. And then I've got that army green on the bottom. And obviously it looks like you can just look right under here and uh, see the underside of these segments. So that's, that's the desired effect for this. I know I'm running long, but I haven't talked to you guys in a while. And since this is my third and final take, if I sound like a crazy zombie that hasn't had sleep, so be it, right? And I've got a couple of those. Now on this one, uh, you guys, I'm gonna show you the other bait where I did, uh, I did two pairs of these eyes. 
These are hand sprayed eyes. And basically what I'm doing, most of the baits are, that come with the 3D eyes, or that if you buy 3D eyes, they come on a card and they're sort of sticky. You can spray any color you want on those pupils. Like if you can't afford to get the, you know, and no no harm, no foul, but guys like these are not inexpensive to get those, those custom eyes for what you get. They're fantastic products, but they're pricey. So you can get some really cool effects just in spraying your own eyes on these. So I think we're gonna incorporate doing stuff like that on the next tips and tricks on how to do that properly, just to show you guys. So that's the, I just wanted to show you the variation in the eyes on these rotten strawberries. One's black and one is this. And this is the matching pair that I did and I did that for this particular bait. And if you guys have seen the channel for a while and you've been around, then you might recognize this stenciled pattern in the middle of this as the same one as being black on the pike cichlid that I did. So, um, this is Cedar Run is carrying this duo blank, and then uh, Dinger is carrying the longer build one right now. Um, you can pick those up respectively and according to that. Great swimmers. I mean, they're just, they're just phenomenal, they're phenomenal swimmers. Love both of those. So we have talked about those. Um, this is going over to Pumpkin Bait Company. I love trading. Uh, I think it's really neat. I love getting y'all's patterns. And uh, yeah, so this is going to her. This is what I spray. She's like, oh, just spray me something cool, crawl pattern. So we're gonna do this. And she in turn is painting one. And I've done that with Pete. Um, and I've, I've uh, traded with Gerald Novick as well. Uh, I sent him a really cool perch. So, and he, I think, has sent me trout. I don't know. I think it's coming. What else do we have? We've got the S's, the party cranks. You guys may have seen these before, but I did a little bit deeper of a purple, and I like purple. Purple's cool. This is one of those table rock type colors. This is the Cajun crawl, Louisiana crawl. All I was missing is the Fleur de Lis. Jets and eyes on that one. Those orange, beautiful jets and eyes. Segments underneath. It almost looks like a fluorescent purple, but it's not. It's just a super deep, deep, deep purple. Not the band. A little orange tangerine on the chest and that bright yellow, not fluorescent yellow. This is just a, uh, a transparent, bright, B-R-I-T-E yellow from Createx. This is the old Delta style crawl. And one of the coolest things that I like about this one is uh, just kind of playing with some different patterns underneath to make those segments come out. A very 3D type effect image. Just kind of playing around with uh, a couple of different things. But yeah, this is an OG pattern. You can get it, all, all of this stuff, except for a couple of these. I even think the rotten strawberries are on there now. Um, is available at the website over at www.jekyllbaits.com. A little foiling on this. There you go. Delta. Big Delta Crawl. And there's those real eyes. And I talk, sing praises about that. These are neat because they come in pairs, folks. You can get them in actual pairs. And I love that. Love that about these eyes. You can pick these real eyes up at Lure Parts right there go get some all different sizes and then last but certainly not least we've got another red discus um the red discus if you guys don't know what discus are go look them up it's spelled d-i-s-c-u-s it's a south amazon uh, south american amazon cichlid cichlid spelled c-i-c-h-l-i-d they are aggressive forage fish uh, very similar to bass as a matter of fact the cichlid that uh, comes to mind is the peacock. It is, yes, there are peacock bass, but there are also peacock cichlids, and bass are very close relatives to the cichlid family. Um, just a, a phenomenal, and I've also done a special order pigeon's blood uh, discus. And the discus are in the angelfish family. If you guys have seen angelfish at the pet stores, um, there, there's just so many different types of fish to get patterns from go google cichlids or or discus or any type of african cichlid and, and cichlids basically they're warm water 
fish. They prefer warm water. They're not quite as temperate as bass are. Bass can live and exist in colder waters. You see them up north, you see them in Canada, you see them all the way down to Florida. The, the Florida and Texas strains of bass uh, do not fare as well in colder water. So basically what you, will, what you would look for are African and South American cichlids in warm temperate waters. And there's, I've got books and books and books on cichlids. They're fantastic fish and I love getting patterns off of there. And that's where I recommend that you guys get your patterns as well. I know we're running long. We're probably over 20 minutes. I've got a couple more to go through. Now this one, that's the rat tail from this guy. This is an oops. This is a flat side that I got from Brian over at Dinger and I really wanted to do a circuit board lip flat side. And then my knucklehead self, I busted the circuit board inside, uh, trying to put it in uh, because they don't come pre-done anymore. They come separate because he was having some issues with tuning. So he's now leaving the tuning up to the people that um, that make the, the patterns. So, and I can understand that. But uh, this one just, I could not get that circuit board. I whittled away as much as I could. And then I'll, you always have to go back and putty and fill these which is another step that I just uh, drives me crazy. But anyways, uh, I, I kind of handled this one a little bit too aggressively and I snapped it and I'm like, huh, so I wonder if I can get this to become a lipless. So I putty filled and then super glued and um, I will let you know what my results are because I'm, I've got this as a tester. I'm gonna swim it. I really love this pattern. This is actually one of my favorite patterns that I've done. Um, it's basically, it's just a Pearl FW ink and PH Martins. Um, it really gives that scaled effect, but there's no scaling, no mesh on this at all. And then I've taken and feathered darker colors through it at an angle just to give that, uh, that different appearance. It's just, it's simple, but it's not simple just because of how the colors are blended. Really, really enjoying that. You're listening to WXPN with me this morning. They've just finished their spring fundraiser. Um, I'm, a, I'm a member, sustaining member for WXPN. They're out of Philly in our nation's founding capital. No longer our capital. Yeah, it is, is it? Yeah, it is. No, DC. I don't know, DC's a mess these days. No politics on the channel though. That's for another day. There you go. There's that. Last but certainly not least, yes, this is the blank that you saw in the February MTV box. Some of you probably got a little Ketchco runt. Um, this is that bait. They've been around for years and years and years through W Lore and uh, is distributed by the Wenhai folks in China. And it is a great swimmer. And a lot of you guys, I've gotten comment after comment after comment and some messages like, because they know I'm an MTB subscriber, and I am, and I love getting those boxes every month. This is not an MTB plug. I'm not sponsored by them, nor do they pay me to say it. But i uh, kind of been getting some hate lately because everybody's noticing that there's more and more Ketchco and less and less Lunkerville or whatever the brand name is at the time. Um, and yes, they are threading through some of their own baits. And yes, they are these same blanks that all of us custom folks can get um, if you know where to look for them. But the thing of it is, they're putting an actual an actual value on it. So this one, I think, uh, was listed for $7.99. Um, and this is not that. I've redone it. Uh, I, 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 I get the, I'll tell you what, let me show you. This is that. There you go. Um, and I, I don't get them from W Lure, I get them from the distributor itself. Like the, there's only like four places in China that really makes baits anyways. Um, so anyways, this, th that's what that is. And I'm not, I'm not going on to say that I can get it better or get it cheaper. Um, but you got to remember once the paint goes on and the eyes go on and the gear goes on, the hooks go on, the feathered treble goes on the back. Yeah, you're looking at seven eight nine dollars and i think their price is quite reasonable for what they are but yeah I, i've noticed that a lot of people are missing that you know they subscribe you pay 27 dollars a month and you want you know you want the mega bass and you want the lucky craft and all that you know berkeley's or whatever it is that but yeah there there is a lot more catch co carl's bait and tackle 
which is the same stuff that all of us custom guys can get. So it is what it is. Um, good, bad, indifferent. I don't think it's anything other than um, creative thinking. So um, it's basically the same things that Strike King has done to brand themselves over the years and, and everybody else out there. So don't be hating on them because we all do the same thing. That is it, folks. We have gone way, way over. Um, love it, hate it, leave it. Leave me some comments. I love you guys. I'm really sorry that it's been so long. I hope that this extraordinarily long <laughs> shop update has made up for that. The next one coming out is your request is subscriber requested. Spray session tips and tricks. And I got to get back to work because I've got a ton of it to do, folks. Love you all to pieces, and I'll talk to you soon. See you on the water. Happy casting.